everyone. Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you all for joining us for our Chamber University with the Miramar Pembroke Pines Regional Chamber of Commerce, Weston Chamber of Commerce, and Pembroke Park West Park Chamber. Um, we are here with Brandside Marketing. We are going to be talking about mastering some mar marketing skills for our small businesses. So I want to introduce our presenter today, Vanessa Conde, with a dynamic career spanning over two decades, originating in New York City in the ad agency business and now in Miami. She is a marketing virtuoso renowned uh, for propelling growth through imaginative campaigns and poignant storytelling. Her expertise lies in harnessing data and technology to refine marketing strategies across both digital and traditional platforms. She boasts a versatile background that covers industries such as travel, luxury, franchising, retail, beauty, nonprofit, and manufacturing. Um, she is deeply committed to making a difference both in her professional realm and the community. As president of the board of directors for a condo in Miami, she leads with vision and responsibility. She recently launched Insight Community Solutions, a consulting firm dedicated to providing support and to mid or low sized condominiums interested in shifting to self-management to gain better control over their finances, enhance transparency, and ensure personalized attention to their unique needs. Um, outside of work, she's an enthusiastic spinner, swimmer, and salsa dancer. Wow, three S's. And who she delights in the rich, <laughs> the rich cultural tapestry of Miami's neighborhoods. Vanessa is also a fur mom dedicating time to raising her beloved Shih Tzu, Cayman. And I'm hoping somewhere in your presentation, there's a dog tax. So, oh. I'm hoping to get her. Uh, but anyway, Vanessa, take it away. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. That was great. And I guess uh, I would say that bio all sums up to I've been doing marketing for a long, long time. Um, longer than I ever thought I, I could admit. Um, time goes really, really fast, especially in Florida. Um, I've been here since 2003, and boy, it's been a whirlwind, and I've seen this community in South Florida grow up to um, to do and be really great, do great things and, and be a really great community. Um, uh, here on the call with us, who's struggling a little bit with her technology, we have Valerie Blues. She is actually the founder of Brandside Marketing, who uh, brought me in to partner with her on um, evolving this brand into a full service marketing agency. So Valerie, I don't know if you have uh, access to your mic now and you can chat with us. Uh, sure. Hold on, let me see. Are you hearing me okay? Yes, we are. Uh, my, I, Mercury must be in retrograde. <laughs> I've had nothing but technical is issues this morning. So um, nice to meet everyone. Uh, uh, apologize for some of the snafus in the beginning. But um, like Vanessa, I, I have a, a pretty robust, well-rounded marketing career. Um, I have previously founded um, a, a cosmetic. I was also the marketing director for um, a boutique finance company where I manage you know, several marketing campaigns contributing to the company's growth. Um, I would say I also have quite a diverse background in marketing, including consulting for New You Magazine, um, which is a, a, a pretty well-known magazine. Um, and yeah, founded Brandside and, along with Vanessa, and we're excited to be here and, and share our, our knowledge with everyone. Thanks, Valerie. So I'm actually going to turn off my camera uh, to save a little bandwidth because my internet here gets a little funky sometimes so that that way it doesn't disrupt um, you hearing the, the presentation of what we have to say. Um, so let me go ahead and do that and then we'll get started. We're going to leave the Q&A uh, for the end of the presentation and when we hit that slide then we'll open it up to any questions you all have. Um, or any uh, advice you may need um, for the things that you are doing in your marketing if you are already doing so. Um, and uh, we're, we're open to getting to know you better, um, which is what this uh, community is all about, right? Um, all right, so let's get started. Um, so mastering modern marketing strategies for success. In today's fast-paced, ever-changing landscape, effective marketing is not just an option, it's a necessity. Um, you know, uh, we, we always struggle in marketing with P&Ls and, co and company budgets when we're part of a, an organization or a team because when things need to be cut and life happens and world economies shift, you know, one of the first things that uh, tends to get cut is marketing. But in today's day and age, especially with the digital landscape and with so much clutter in that digital landscape, the last thing you want to do is cut marketing, right? It is how you tell your story how you connect with your audience and how you differentiate your brand and what has become an ever 
more crowded marketplace. Um, I, I, I forget the numbers right now, but I think something like on any given day with your technology, with your phone, with your computer, you have you get hit like 40,000 times. I think it's something crazy like that with some form of, form of communication or marketing or something that is being fed to you um, all the time, all day long through, uh, you know, the, 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 the devices that you use. So imagine Imagine that a brand has to break through that clutter. It's, it's not easy. What we'll be covering today is understanding your audience, choosing right, the right channels for marketing. How do you look at your marketing mix? How do you look at your positioning? Actually, that's really the, one of the most important things. How do you say what you do in a very concise way and differentiate yourselves from the competition? And then how do you measure success? You know, I've worked in franchising as an industry for very many years. And in training our franchisees, one of the things that I, I kind of work a little bit backwards when I train with franchisees and I start with, let's start with where are you going to end up with the metrics? After you do all of this marketing, what are the analytics going to tell you? And that's very easy to look at nowadays with digital marketing, right? You can look at it in real time. You can make decisions in real time. You can change your budget on a dime. And that's so important nowadays. So you're not wasting your money, wasting your time. But what do you do with that? So many franchisees would look at me as like, uh, I don't know, everyone's kind of like throwing the dart on the wall and hoping it sticks. But really, you should be taking that data and using it to make decisions about how to move your business forward from a marketing standpoint. Where do you spend your money next based on what those that data tells you? So of everything we talk about, everything you do in marketing, the most important part of it is the results that you receive at the end of it all, because that's what's going to help drive you to the next decision you make in your business, right? Understanding your audience is very important. So I'm assuming if you're part of the chamber, you've already got your business and you've gotten started, right? You're off to the races. And hopefully what you've done is, you know, really analyzed who you're marketing your business to, right? So, you know, starting with the basics, diving into their habits, segmentation matters, empathy is key, really understanding, you know, who your customer is uh, today? Who will they be ongoing? What happens when they age out and you need to replace them? Always keeping your finger on the pulse of, um, of, the, of nuances related to how customers shop for their products. How, you know, you know, age ranges, demographics, where, you know, where they live, how they integrate products and services into their lifestyle. It is a study of uh, uh, psychology, almost in a way. Marketing really does look at sociology, psychology, as well as coming up with pretty ads and coming up with copy that engages people and touches them in an emotional way so that they hopefully choose you versus the competition, right? It's really getting into bed with them and understanding what, dri what truly drives them and understanding the foundation upon which your marketing strategy is built and how it aligns with where they are in their lives is the most one of the most important things that you can do as you prepare to plan your marketing, okay? And then crafting your unique value proposition. So this, this is true of, you know, as you establish your business model and in marketing, you know, I remember back in the days, back in the days in the early nineties, right. And when I started in my marketing career and we did it, this was like, I think there were like five basic forms of, of advertising. It was like TV, radio, a billboard, newspaper, print. Um, you sent some postcards and probably that was about it. And, um, you know, but one of the hardest things that there was always to do when we were working with a new brand was coming up with that one sentence, coming up with that one value proposition, who they are, what they, who they were going to be that to, and what service they were going to provide and how they were going to make a difference in, in that customer's life, right? And you had to kind of sum that up in a very concise way because the more concise you were, the more simple it is in how you just determine and decipher your model, your brand to differentiate you 
from who you are in the world versus everyone else is the e how easy it was going to become from that point forward to create all of the things that you need to create to market yourself. We would always say the positioning is your umbrella. And from once you you create the umbrella, that's the hardest thing you can do. All the other things flow easily. Then the copywriter can then develop their beautiful romantic copy and the creative people can put the pictures together that we're going to articulate the brand based on that positioning line. So it's really one of the most important things you can do. So as an example here, if you look at Freshbox, right? This is kind of made up <laughs> as an example, but healthy meal delivery service, right? Here's a kind of long um, uh, uh, value proposition, right? Fresh box delivers chef crafted healthy meals to your doorstep, helping you to save time, eat well, and feel great. Our meals are made from locally sourced organic ingredients, ensuring that you get fresh, nutritious food without the hassle of cooking with flexible subscription plans and a variety of dish delicious options. Fresh box makes healthy eating um, easy and convenient. Probably those last few words are going to be a great tagline for them, right? Um, but there's a lot of stuff in here about all the things that they do that are great and all the ways that they're going to make their customers feel and all of the things that ultimately will happen to the customer once they, you know, engage with this brand and um, all of the different services, right? And that's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot for a value proposition. They probably would do better if they narrow it down to one sentence that says, fresh box delivers healthy chef crafted meals straight to your door, making it easy to eat well without the hassle of cooking. So all the extra stuff is great fluff, but that can be used later on when you start coming up with your ads and coming up with your storytelling and coming up with your social media posts. And you have all of this great content marketing that we'll talk about a little bit later that starts to expand on that positioning statement that establishes you as what the hero of healthy chef crafted meals that are delivered straight to your door, which does what? makes it easy to eat well without the hassle of cooking. That's really all the customer wants to know. What am I getting? Something healthy. How? Because a chef crafted it. And how, how am I getting it? Straight to my door. And what is it ultimately going to do? It's going to help me eat well without me cooking. <laughs> Which is ultimately, I, I think most women probably would love. I don't have to cook and everybody walks away feeling great and being healthy. So this is a key, this is just an example of the value of a of a positioning statement, how you want to craft that for your business if you haven't already done so. It is really kind of the road map for your business of which you can then begin to create the communications that you need to create to promote yourself ongoing in all different aspects and channels of media, public relations, and all of the things that you do. And hopefully you see that example kind of clearly kind of defines that, right? If you look at your business in the most simplest way, then all of a sudden the ideas start to flow. And that's, that's what, as marketers, we do. And when you partner with a marketing company, if it, you're at the position to do that, they take a lot of that heavy lifting. They would do that work for you, right? That many of those... In, in, in my day. And they're not easy. They're not easy. And one of the hardest things to do is to sell yourself, right? And as a business owner, when you're coming up with an idea, you know, as a marketer, I, you know, it's it took me a million drafts to write a bio and, it probably, and I still look at it. And I'm like, that sucks. Like that, I'm embarrassed when I read it. And I'm like, oh my God, that's why I always wrap it up and say, well, you know, that means I just did a lot of marketing for a long time is because we're our own worst critics and we have a hard time marketing ourselves. And sometimes when we also create our own business um, in a way, we, we suffer the same plight, right? And sometimes we need the expert outside of ourselves to partner with us, to look at us through a pair of fresh lenses and help us create the things that become hard for us to do for ourselves, okay? Embracing the role of branding um, so, you know, after the positioning statement, then you kind of have to get to work on what does that, where does that take us to um, in terms of an ID, an identifier? How do people identify us? And that's where your logo, your brand ID, 
it starts establishing the look and feel of who you are so that when people look at your logo, they're like, oh yeah, those are the people that deliver healthy chef crafted meals straight to the door and blah, 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 blah. I mean, and they're not going to say that line because usually a positioning statement is an internal line that sets the path for the roadmap of the business. It's that language that you use and then you expand on in your communications ongoing. But the idea is through your iconology and your logo, you will become you will gain brand awareness if you're consistent with it. If you have a partner or a marketing partner or a branding agency partner that helps you develop something that's really strong and iconic and resonates with who you are. And usually your positioning statement kind of sets the tone for that. Um, I mean, there's a reason why through consistency and obviously we put brands here that have a lot of money. I mean, who doesn't know the Golden Arches? They've been at it for a million years. There's been a lot of money behind that. And of course, everyone knows it, but they started off real small back in the day too, as did Starbucks coffee. And now really you've gotten to a point where all you need to do is see the mermaid. If, if you see her by herself, you know exactly who they're talking about, you know, exactly what the brand is. If you see the green, you know, with the little circle, it, you know, you could, it, it's, it, everyone knows. Same with like a FedEx, obviously a Coca-Cola, but on a, on a, on a more basic, on a more basic level, the idea is to, you know, build some strong iconology around your logo and your brand so that um, your brand is the promise you make to your customers, not just in how you talk about yourself, but in your visual representation too, okay? Strong branding builds customer loyalty and trust over time. It helps you to stay true to your values and your value proposition and your positioning, and it eventually all ties together and works together towards the same goal. Building an effective marketing strategy. So, you know, once you've established who you are, what you are to who you go are going to be that, and you come up with your positioning statement and your brand ID, and you got all your pretty colors and your look and feel and your stock photos and all that kind of stuff. Now you got to get to work, right? In terms of building the marketing strategy that is going to include probably a, a local marketing mix or plan that is going to happen around your four walls. You know, we always talk about in marketing, where does the most important marketing happening? Well, right outside your door, right? You know, right within a certain square miles around your establishment. Um, if you have a brick and mortar, um, if you're, you know, digital and that's the nature of your business, well, it's probably broader than that. And it could be global. And there's obviously ways to get your brand awareness going in that way as well. And that's the beauty of digital, right? It gives us a lot of access even further outside of our four walls. But, uh, you know, you have to start with clear goals when you're planning your marketing. You know, you want to know what, you know, what are you going to achieve? And you need audience-driven tactics. And you always want to take a multi-channel approach. I know in some cases, some startup brands, some smaller brands, you know, coming out of the gate after you've exhausted your energy and your resources and your budget on all the operational focused items to get your business off the ground, then you're like, oh my goodness, I have to do marketing and I really don't have a lot of money to do that. What is the most cost effective way that I could look at putting some sort of an integrated marketing plan together that will start getting the brand awareness going. And there are ways to do it, right? And digital marketing has allowed us a lot more budget flexibility to spend, you know, not like back in the day where, you know, you did a newspaper ad was probably going to cost you $500 to $1,000 a pop, depending on the newspaper, depending on the market. I'm New York, if you're in New York and you're doing it in the New York Times, that's a whole different level. Or a print ad that was going to be a couple of thousand dollars as well. And you'd have to run that, you know, month over month before you saw some return on investment and have a dedicated, you know, phone number in there and wait for the phone to ring. You know, now you have options in the digital marketing world that allow you to see something happening almost the minute you flip the switch on, right? Or at least be able to allow you to make changes in your budget rather quickly if you don't see the results that you want 
um, so that you're not wasting money and you can save that money and turn it towards a different tactic. But I always say that in today's day and age, you probably want to look at an integrated mix that has, especially depending on your market, depending on your, your, your offering and service and the audience that you're targeting, some little bit of digital, some form of traditional. When we say traditional, we want to talk about maybe some EDDM mailers or a flyer distribution, or maybe there is a local coupon cutter. That's the nature of your business. And you want to go that route, something traditional like that together with some form of digital marketing. We'll talk about that later, layered upon that. And then maybe some email marketing as well, where if you have a database, you want to keep in front of that audience ongoing to communicating that you're there, you're offering your products and services, and always make sure that your customers are being communicated to regularly. And then staying flexible because things are evolving and changing every single day. In digital marketing, there's a new app every day. There's a new way to, to market on Google. Google's changing their algorithms or the way that you know they allow people to market themselves, staying ahead of the curve on that. Again, that's where having a, a, a marketing partner, if your budget allows, is a good way to go about staying ahead of these things because that's what they do for a living anyway. So they could do that for you um, so that you're always capitalizing on the marketing, marketing opportunities that can expand your brand, brand awareness. And if your strategy is to gain lead generation and conversion that they're helping you do that as well. And if you're an owner operator that do doesn't have time to dedicate to this, then you may want to consider that as, as part of your budget as well and partnering with someone. I'm going to turn it over to Valerie right now quickly so that she can take us through how to leverage digital marketing in your marketing mix and some of the other key components that, that play a role in the digital realm. Thank you, Vanessa. So um, let's let's dive into the world of digital marketing a little bit. Vanessa began to touch on it, um, but you know, just to get a little bit more pointed um, in today's world, obviously, right? Having a strong online presence isn't just nice to have. It, it's absolutely essential to the survival of your business. So whether you're looking to reach, you know, new customers, um, build brand awareness, and and ultimately drive sales. The wonderful thing um, that digital marketing offers now is there, it, it really is, it has a powerful set of tools to help you achieve your goals, right? But with so many different channels out there, strategies, you know, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, it can feel overwhelming. So one of the things that you want to do in, in considering le um, leveraging digital marketing is to really try and begin to understand your audience, right? So you want to go where the eye eyeballs are, which means you really want to understand the, the demographic that you're trying to target. So you want to really think through, you know, the social media where your, your, your demographic is, um, you know, and also e email marketing. If you have a, a database search engines, where is your audience, right? So your, your digital presence really needs to be strategic and it really needs to focus on platforms where your audience is most active, okay? Um, because th this approach really uh, maximizes your, your reach and, and your engagement, ultimately your engagement. The other great thing about digital marketing, uh, the digital marketing landscape at this point is that it really is much, much easier to dial in to what's working and how your money is working for you. So it's essential that you use um, these analytics to you know, allow for uh, uh, precise tracking and measurement, right? So that you can make data-driven decisions, okay? And in turn, you can then continuously optimize your, your, um, your campaigns based on these insights to improve your, your ROI, okay? And then you know, budget smartly. So you, what you want to do once you're reviewing all of the, the analytics is to prioritize the channels that are giving you the best ROI. If you know Facebook advertisement is, is working, then that's where you want to you know focus um, your budget, right? So um, you know not all digital platforms are going to suit your business. So you really want to focus on the ones that are driving results. 
So efficient budgeting ensures that your, your marketing dollars are being well spent because it can easily get away from you and, and become expensive. But like, you know, Vanessa had mentioned earlier in the presentation, with digital marketing now, it's it's much, much easier to look at your, your analytics and make quick shifts in how, you know, your budget is being allocated. Gone are the days of, you know, the, the, the spray and pray <laughs> mentality. You can really use um, digital to, um, you know, be very uh, effective and strategic with your budget. And, and the other also, thing- I'm sorry, mm-hmm. I wanted to just jump no, in ahead. Valerie really quick. I think, you know, social media is a great area where you can kind of segment your audience very clearly. I think it's everybody knows you don't have to be a marketer where what the audience level is in the different social media channels, right? So we know TikTok tends to be a younger audience where it's very video focused. It's all about the videos. It's all about being very creative in the videos. I I have a lot of brands that I work with that I always caution them with TikTok when when they're considering it because everybody wants to jump on the TikTok bandwagon. And I say, be careful with that because TikTok is ruthless. If you jump on the TikTok bandwagon, you have to, and it, and of course, this is different. We're talking about influencers and content creators where they're selling widgets, right? Where they're selling particular products. If you want to sell like a million pens, whatever it is. But when I say, if you want to get in there for brand awareness, you have to make sure that, if, especially if you're not working with a marketing partner, that you are crafty, that you are interesting, that you are young, hip savvy, and maybe you're not young, but that you're acting young, hip savvy, and you are on the ball, and that that content is as competitive as some of the content. There's, I see content on TikTok that I'm like, whoa, like some of these people are out of control in a good way in terms of how they use editing tools to really put this stuff together and get it out there. And they're doing it regularly and all the time. This is their life job. And and they spend all their time just doing that. So if you're going to play in that space, get ready to play and make sure that you are coming up with content strategies that are good and that your brand is going to resonate with that kind of audience. Because if you start the momentum, you got to keep the momentum going because TikTok audience is an audience that's quick to turn on you if you're not keeping up the momentum or just turn a blind eye and not pay attention. And they're volatile that way. I mean, look at what they've done to the celebrity community. They are, they are a cancel culture. They cancel will cancel, culture. Yep. They will cancel you out in a minute. And then you go to your, I, I find Instagram is a safe space in a sense where it's a little bit of an older, a little bit of a younger demographic. People are sharing. You can get away with, you know, video. You can do, you know, still, you, there's a lot of different opportunity there. And it's probably a better environment for a wide range of businesses to use for marketing. Facebook, the audience has gotten older. It, it, is, it did, does tend to be an older audience. And then there are some businesses that thrive there. The real estate business thrives in that market um, still. And so, you know, so social media is a great example. I bring that up for segmenting your audience. You don't have to be a marketer to really understand who's on each channel, but it's critical for you to know who's on each channel and how to play the channel game before you start putting yourself out there. I just wanted to make that point. Yeah, that was, that's a great point, Vanessa, especially the, you know, the uh, celebrity culture and how they easily get canceled, become, you know, canceled on TikTok. And it just, you know, reverberates throughout you know, different, you know, parts of anything that they're doing. I think of, you know, JLo and, and her movie and, and her tour and how I feel like TikTok definitely played a big part in, um, you know, uh, affecting how, um, you know, uh, I, I'm at a loss for words here. I don't want to be offensive, but essentially how her, you know, her, her summer she, tour failed. It all failed. <laughs> so um, the other thing about digital marketing um, and one that Vanessa brought up really a, a really great point, especially as it pertains to, to TikTok and understanding your platform but you also want to be authentic, right? Because digital marketing isn't just about sales. It's also about building relationships through your, you know, the, the way you're interacting with them and engaging with them. 
So you want to engage with your audience in a, in a genuine way that builds long lasting connections. I mean, it, it's really obvious when your brand isn't being authentic, people can, can smell it, they can feel it. So it, it's, a, it is important to also, you know, consider having, um, when you're putting together your campaigns to be authentic because, you know, authentic interactions ultimately foster loyalty and, and positive word of mouth, like I was bringing up in, in the JLo example. So, um, and kind of reviewing uh, uh, this part. So EcoGlow, um, in, in this part of the presentation, it's really just to start with EcoGlow, this company that's selling eco-friendly and sustainable home products and really um, kind of to just bring home everything we've, we've discussed about how you, you launch a brand and really begin to build, you know, our, the marketing efforts. So you want to um, define goals and objectives, right? So as we started the presentation, one of the things that you wanna do is awareness, really building brand awareness um, for this brand specifically among eco-conscious consumers, right? The next thing you wanna consider is, is lead, um, lead generation, right? Capture leads through email, subscriptions, and, and content offers. And this is specific. This is just a, a, an example of what we would do for a, a company like this. Sales, you know, considering driving online sales through e-commerce platforms, right? Um, engagement through, um, you know, digital marketing, social media. You begin beginning to build a community around sustainability and eco-friendly living. So what are we doing here? We want to identify the target audience, right? Develop a unique value proposition, which is, a, this is a company that's selling eco-friendly and sustainable home products. And then begin to carve out and create a content marketing plan. And obviously this is high level. There are you know, many things that go on in between, but this is just to give you an overview of the steps to take when you're considering, you know, when you're when you're considering your marketing campaign and putting together a marketing campaign. Optimize the website and SEO, you know, leverage social media marketing. Um, implement paid advertising, right? Um, assuming you have, um, you know, begun to receive, you know, a, a feedback and engagement. You're now using your database. So you're using email marketing, right? Measure and analyze your performance. So that goes back to, you know, some of your, your paid advertising, your social media. Where are you getting the, the most engagement? Where are you getting the, mo the most bang for your buck? And then you begin to adjust and optimize. So harnessing the power of content marketing. And, you know, Vanessa touched on that quite a bit with the, with the TikTok example, because I really do think it's important for people to understand where they are putting their, their content and the, you know, the potential repercussions of it. Um, and I do think that uh, an Instagram is probably a sa safer space, you know, depending on your, your business model, obviously, right? So content is king, you know, quality content builds trust. It engages your, your audience and it, it positions your brand as an authority in your industry, right? So you want to make sure that you are creating the right content. The right content can, can educate, it can inspire and ultimately persuade your audience to, to take some kind of action. Um, you want to tell your story, right? People connect with stories, not just products. Um, you know, a, a story essentially uh, humanizes your business and makes it relatable, okay? Um, stories can help your audience connect with your values and your mission on a deeper level so that when they are uh, making a purchase or going to your business for some kind of a service, they feel good about what they're doing or, or about what they're purchasing. And then consistency. Consistency is really key, especially in, in this day and age where you're getting so much information thrown at you, so many advertisements thrown at you. You want to make sure that you are, you know, keeping your, your audience engaged regularly 
because regular updates keep your audience coming back. So having um, a consistent content schedule, it helps build engagement um, and it can also build anticipation. You know, if you're a clothing brand, for example, you have a new drop that's coming out. One way to engage your audience and build anticipation is to talk about the new drop so that they're anticipating, you know, to anticipating it and going back to your social media um, platforms over and over again, right? Um, so, you know, once you are being consistent, it also signals reliability, you know, which, which is an, a key trait for building trust. And I just wanted to jump in on the quality, on the, uh, you know, quality of the content um, is also, you know, is, is important, but when you're creating uh, content for your, for your marketing channels, especially in the social media realm, especially if you're doing a monthly newsletter and things that have deadlines, right? Everything's on a, on a, on a deadline. Um, you have to kind of schedule yourself. And again, I always keep throwing it back to, and I guess it's for obvious reasons, maybe not so obvious, but I guess, you know, when, when you, when you're looking at having a, a, a partner help you this or somebody dedicated, let's say there's somebody dedicated in your office to the marketing tactics and the, the ex executing on all of these different things and these strategies that you've put in place, you need to make sure that you are developing these things in time so that you're not behind the eight ball and trying to rush to get that content out to fulfill your strategy schedule, right? That's the most important thing because talking about transparency and what people sense, people are not stupid nowadays. They, they are getting savvier and smarter, just as smart as they are creating those videos on TikTok is as smart as they can see right through the content that you're putting out there. So if it's rushed to get out into the world, people will read that, feel that they will read between the lines. So make sure that you, I always have my teams build content for social media, for the newsletter, for the email drip campaigns a month before the month, assuming that a lot of the content is canned content. By that, I mean, it's something that's generic that I know it's going to be based on offers. It's going to be wrapped around a monthly holiday and things that I can anticipate way in advance, right? Leaving myself the flexibility because I'm organized and I'm planning on that content schedule creation on a timeline that allows me then to pivot on a dime when the time comes as I'm in the month of which that content is running. So assume I create the content in May for the schedule that's running in June, but let's say in the month of June, something happens with the customer that I'm like, boom, that's content worthy. And I want to put that on social media. I can do that with a breath of fresh air, knowing that I'm not stressed to get any of the other stuff done. I can throw a, you know, a post out there into the mix for my June calendar that won't disrupt things and it'll be genuine and relevant to what's happening on the fly at that moment with that particular customer. If you have a store, they came in, they ate your yogurt ice cream with all the toppings on it and they loved it. And they had wonderful things to say and you captured that on camera and you wanted to post it right there that moment. And so planning ahead, especially with content, is the most important thing you can do as well, because it gives you a moment to breathe and think about being creative on the fly at, at the moment. OK, so I just want to throw that example out. Sorry, I didn't mean to jump on you, Valerie. No, no, you're fine. Um, great points. And then you want to diversify your content also and consider where you're 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 presenting your your content and the platform. So TikTok obviously is you know all video driven, right? Um, when you consider you know a Facebook and Instagram, you can mix things up a little bit, right? So you and you want to consider blogs, videos, infographics, you know, just doing things to keep it fresh. You know, different formats catered to to preference different preferences, and you can broaden your reach. Okay, um, a varied content also keeps your audience engaged and reduces content fatigue. If you're you know, posting the, the same format all the time, it gets less and less engaging. Um, I'm gonna kind of just go, we still have you know, quite a few slides, but I'm kind of breeze through it just a little bit um, to leave some room for questions. But uh, a, another thing that you know, we wanted to review was maximizing um, you know, local marketing opportunities. 
can you go, go to the next slide, Vanessa? Vanessa? Yeah, oh, it's there, there we go. It's there. Think, uh -huh. yeah. So think local first, okay? Um, obviously, I'm sure many of us have, have local businesses, whether you know it's brick and mortar or you're in the service industry, you wanna think at a local level first, right? So tap into your local community, build strong, loyal customers. You know, local marketing is really effective in that it can create a sense of community around your brand, okay? Leads to, to higher customer retention. Um, consider local SEO, that really uh, matters. Ensuring your business is in, easily found on, on local search engines. Partnerships as well. Collaborate with other local businesses. Community involvement, okay? Being active in, in local events. Right, whether that's sponsorships, you know, philanthropy, all of these things can significantly enhance your 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 brand Im image. And then integrating an e-commerce strategy, right? So, um, you know, an on online presence is crucial. Even if you're a local business, online sales can't be ignored, right? So, e-commerce really expands your reach beyond your physical location. So with the growing trend of, of online shopping, shopping, it really is extremely important to, to have some kind of an e-commerce e uh, presence. It's really essential. The user experience and thinking of what people, um, the experience when people get to your, your website, how is the, the, how do you navigate the website, you know, when it's built? Is it intuitive? Is it easy to navigate? Um, you know, a, a, a website that's e that's easy to navigate can significantly reduce bounce rates, right? You want to prioritize speed, ease of use. And this is actually really important, mobile responsiveness, because the primary uh, uh, form of purchases is happening from a mobile phone. Um, mobile optimization, you want to ensure your e-commerce site works well on all devices and um, having a simple checkout process. That's essential as well. advertising options. I'll, I'll let you jump in on this one, Vanessa. Okay. So navigating advertising options. I mean, I think we've covered this and I've talked about the fact that having a healthy marketing mix is really important. Knowing what your options are is, you know, key. So you'll have to do some research on the upfront or, you know, partner with somebody that can talk to you about these things and educate you on what SEO means, what pay-per-click means, what it means to, you know, optimize your Google uh, you know, a uh, uh, business page um, and, uh, you know, use social media for leverage. You know, all of these platforms offer unique advantages and the more educated you are on how to use them and what benefit they give you in a marketing plan helps you plan better. Test platforms to see where you get the most bang for your buck. I've had in my franchising career, franchisees in, in business that have tried for 20 years, uh, everything there is to try and still don't know whether it's the blue pill or the red pill. They don't know what the magic pill is because things are always evolving and changing. And there are some things based on regionality, you know, things that, you know, work in major markets versus what works better in smaller markets. You know, smaller markets tend to have, they're a little bit more antiquated. They go more traditional where in a place like New York City or Chicago or Miami or something like that, everybody's digital, digital, digital. So you, you depending on where you live is you'll better understand what works for you in terms of a mix, but you got to educate yourself. You want to make sure your ads are seen by the right people. Targeting is key. Measure and adjust, measure and adjust, push and pull, throw that dart on the wall. But guess what? It's going to be precise because the technology today allows you to do that and track ad the tracking and keep track of ad performance and tweak as needed because that's the beauty of the technology that you have access to. It allows you to shave off the fat, keep what works working and pivot on a dime when it isn't so that you are maximizing your budget and using your resources well. And like I said, even though I left it for the end, I always like to talk about it at the beginning, which is what I just said, monitoring and, and adjusting your efforts. Metrics like conversion rates, customer acquisition costs, and ROI insights are so valuable 
it's like it sometimes it looks like Greek even to me when I look at it. Sometimes I lean on my experts on the team that are more digitally focused. I don't build websites. I don't write code. I I I know where my weaknesses are. I know what I went to school for, but I know how to oversee all of the disciplines and let the experts do what they do and then educate me on it ongoing, right? So even with metrics and analytics, I need some of these guys that delve into analytics to help me and say, this is what this says, this is what it means and how you should move the business forward or recommend to your client to move the business forward. Check in on your campaigns regularly. Don't just turn it on and walk away and then three months later say, why didn't no one walk in the door? I mean, you need to really be looking at it every single day to see what's working and not what's not working. And if something is not working, don't be afraid to change course. Celebrate small wins. Every time I would see something like, oh my God, one customer bought a discount. Yay. Like, you know, it would be, for me, it was like so exciting. And of course, you know, some franchisees would look at me like, but you're supposed to bring in 1000 customers. What are you talking about? I'm like, well, one, and then we'll get the rest. So, you know, build on what's working, celebrate the wins. I always believe like you put positive energy out there, the universe will kick it back and you'll get more. Okay, so with that, we'll wrap it up and turn it over to a Q&A session and let you folks ask us questions. Feel free to unmute yourself if you have a question, um, but I just wanna say thank you for presenting in the meantime, and we'll definitely have this up on, on our YouTube channel. And like I mentioned in the chat, there are a couple other uh, Chamber University sessions that touch on some of these topics, like for the perfect example of choosing what the right social media platforms are for your business. So you can feel free to, to look at some of those. Um, but yes, if there's any questions, please feel free to unmute yourself.